Welcome back to another Magic of Mayhem tutorial video. My name is Ken Erickson, and we're going to go over some of the rules um, of the game. You can, you're more than welcome to read these. These are included in every game, uh, but I might go over a little bit, a little more nuanced kind of stuff that's a little bit harder for us to fit into game. We could, probably could have added a whole bunch more cards to it, but we wanted to kind of make the put as many cards in there that were lots of fun rather than the instruction ones. Hopefully, you get a lot of what you need from these videos. Uh, first off, the basically uh, some of the basic rules of the game. Um, they, you're welcome to change if you like. Although we recommend you follow kind of the rules at first until you get kind of a sense of how the game's played. And then feel free to play with these numbers um, and create your own kind of house rules. I think that's great. We've um, we've we've had probably 25 different versions of this game as we've gone through, and we had a really hard time picking which ones to put down as the rules because they were all fun in different ways. So if you find it a one particular way that you like to play, feel free to pursue that all you like. So the basic rules we, we recommend a maximum hand size of 10 cards. You start over 10 cards in hand. That's a lot of cards you got to hold on to. Um, so that you put down is also um, the kind of strategy that um, Ethan, the co-creator of the game, who's 10 years old. Um, kind of discovered and that's if you kind of hoard a lot of your element cards you can sometimes use those to bring them back into the game um, and and really kind of destroy towards a, the later part of a, of a round so we don't like necessarily like the, I don't like the idea of being destroyed by that kind of strategy it seems too too silly to me so we put a little bit of a hand limit on there but feel free to change that like I say um, also we have our the wizards start with uh, 20 points of health um, and every time a wizard takes damage it reduces their health by that amount um, and every time a wizard heals themselves or is healed by an ally player, then their health is increased. One thing is, though, you can't have your health go above 20 points. Uh, gameplay also proceeds clockwise. And um, uh, you can oftentimes we'd recommend that maybe the youngest player or maybe the more novice players um, be a start first. Gives them a tiny bit of an edge to, um, to start the game before uh, to start at the beginning um, uh, before everybody else. So it gives a little bit of an edge. So you can give that to your younger players or your novice players. Um, now, winning the game basically is quite simple. You bring the, um, uh, the wizard, uh, every wizard's health down to zero except for you, and then uh, you'll win the game. Or if your health gets down to zero, you, uh, you lose the game. And in this, in this game, you can't, once your, your health hits zero, you cannot be healed from there. Um, you cannot come back. You know, dead is dead is what we say. Um, there's one kind of somewhat of a, um, you could say, uh, kind of break, breaks that rule to a degree is if you summon an elemental creature, um, if you're, and you actually perish, your health goes down to zero, but your, your elemental creature is still around, you can continue to control it. You're still out of the game, but it's quite possible that you could use your elemental to, to then defeat your opponent and then actually end the game in a draw. So that uh, your elemental will continue. You can't increase its health. You can't do anything else with it, but you can use it to attack. You can control its movements kind of from beyond the grave. So that sounds so we call that the kind of power wizard tip or pro wizard tip. It's a it's a very fun and satisfying way to uh, uh, to kind of humiliate your foes. You wouldn't necessarily be able to win because you're. I guess you could say you would win because your both wizards are gone, but the elemental survived. So if you want to call that a win for the for the wizard that uh, that cast the elemental that summoned the elemental, you can. Or you can say that if uh, if the wizard perish, the wizard perish. You'll have to decide that ahead of time on how you like to do it. But uh, I think that's I, I kind of call that a win, uh, and it's a, it's a pretty fun way to do it uh, when it does happen. Uh, it doesn't happen too often, but that's a, I like that a lot. So and then the gameplay proceeds until one wizard or creature remains standing. All right. So the game basic game setup is that we have the game setup into three different decks. You have your element um, cards, you have your spell cards, and you have your mayhem cards. And basically, you combine element cards into spell cards. Um, in order to cast spells to defeat your foes. And then uh, mayhem cards will be factored in there to create some silly effects as you're going through. Um, each, you're gonna be separating these out into, into separate decks, and then you will shuffle each deck individually. Um, so they won't be shuffled together or they come in any way, they're separate decks. And when you discard them, um, we oftentimes say, if you have your element deck, you can just you can have your discard um, element deck right next to it, you can have your spell cards, then you have your spell discard uh, deck next to it, you have your mayhem cards, you have your mayhem discard deck next to it. That's really easy. You can do it underneath if you like, whichever makes it easier. Maybe you turn it sideways so it's more visible that it's a discard. Sometimes when you start to get halfway through the game, you can't tell which one's the, the, the deck to draw from and which one's the discard to. So sometimes you'll turn it sideways, maybe underneath, to indicate that it's a discard. Um, however you want to do it, just makes just as long as it's clear. And then when you first start to deal out for the game, you're going to deal five element cards and three spell cards. Um, I, you can play with those numbers too if you like, but um, we actually find that works out really well. For the most part, with the way we have our combo spell, uh, sorry, combo elements and the double elements and the single elements and the wild card elements, the, the ones we, we have, it looks like that it's symbol right there, um, you have those together, you can almost always cast a spell in the first round. So that's always fine. We don't, um, if you go with less spells, you go with less elements, you might have to do some discards and then actually cast your spells the next round. That's not very fun. We like to get up and running and doing the game right away. So, um, and then these will be, you'll um, have your place the remaining cards, uh, decks face down on the play surface. That's where you have your decks here. Decks, and then I talked about the discards as well. 
Um, and then the optional, freak the other wizards out by laughing gleefully while making uncomfortable direct eye contact. So if you're doing anyway, I shouldn't have to tell you that. You want to freak out your, your opponents as much as you can possible. So then um, we're going to go with the card anatomy, which is here. First we're going to talk about is the protective uh, shield barriers. The, um, I think actually I'm going to skip ahead to, let's go here instead. Um, so we're going to talk about the element cards uh, first off. So for the element cards, um, these are the, what we like to call the ingredients that are used to cast a spell. If your spell is actually the... Uh, the, the recipe that you're trying to make, then the elements are the ingredients necessary to make that recipe, to make that spell. So uh, we have an example here of a single, um, a single element, um, uh, element card, and that's lightning. So basically it's worth one lightning. That's it. You just see here, just that little icon there that says lightning, it's worth one. There's no number next to it, nothing. It's not any, other, any kind of complicated that. Very simple to take, to, to kind of uh, understand. Next we have like what we call the double element. Uh, cards and that's where it's worth two elements. This one's called Raging Fire and it's actually worth two elements. If you look right in here, you can see that there's um, there's the fire element and it has a little two next to it. And when you have that, that actually is, let's see, I could probably even zoom in on that a little bit. And you can actually see that, that um, it has a little two there so it's worth the two elements. It has worth two elements um, and they can't be split between multiple spells. So if you use, um, if you use this card in one spell, that card goes away. You discard that card. You do not um, you do not get a chance to um, to use the leftover if you want to call it that fire in another spell. That's pretty important. Um, that's uh, something that came up in our play testing, so we make sure that's real clear. Um, we also have what's called combo element cards. You have single combo element cards and you have double combo element cards. It doesn't matter what you call them. That's just kind of what we call them. But you'll see here, this is a fire cold combo card. So it's worth one fire or it's worth one cold element. You can see the elements right here. They're next to each other. They're not stacked on top of each other, separate from one another. You have a fire on the left and you have a cold on the right. The two of those together, you get to choose one of them, and one of those will go into your spell. The other one, nothing happens to it. And these are opposing elements. Um, whenever we have these combo cards, they're opposing elements. That means they don't really play well together, and you'll very rarely see them combine together. There are some exceptions to that, but very few. Um, so very rarely will you, will you have a spell that will require both a fire and a cold. It'll be one or the other, and that's why we did it this way, so that you can kind of start casting spells right away, rather than just having all single element cards and have a big hand full of stuff and not be able to do anything fun with it which is actually how the game was originally, until some of our backers actually recommended some changes um, when we did some playtesting. So we thank you backers for, um, for bringing it up to us. It really changed the game and made it a heck of a lot more fun. Um, and this one here is what we call a double combo element card. And it's basically just like the, the combo card here, and it's also just like the double element card here, except it's both at the same time. It actually is a lightning, or in this particular case, it's limitless lightning and epic earth. That's either two lightning or it's two earth. It could be one or the other. It can't be two earth lightning and two earth. Um, it can be, it's, it's one or the other. So it's right here, worth two lightning or it's worth two earth elements. And they can't be split. You can't have one lightning and one earth um, uh, between two different spells. You can't have uh, you know two earth going to one and then two earth lightning going to another because they can't be split that way. It's two light. See, it basically becomes either one lightning and one or one earth into a spell or it's one earth. Um, uh, or two earth into a spell. So it becomes, um, you know, just, just, just one of those things. And then if you don't, whatever you use for that spell, if you use this card in a spell, it gets used up. So the card gets discarded. You can't use it for anything else. So that's um, it's kind of the, some of the basic anatomies of those. We also have another card, car, card um, element card called the wild card. We actually call it the blended element, but it's basically a wild card. And the wild card, um, it's, it allows you to choose one of six elements. There are actually eight elements in the game, but there are six of them um, that this one can be used for. You see them listed here, the, uh, the actual uh, images. And the, um, you get to choose one of those to do it. We don't have any double blended elements. We don't have single blended elements. So they're, they're very precious. They're very valuable cards. Um, so you want to use them quite, well, quite wisely, I should say. Um, you have man cards. Man cards are kind of silly, funny effects occur. Um, and they can, they can basically make your spell much more powerful, or they can um, you know, make it blow up in your face. It can do all kinds of funny, uh, crazy effects. And um, I think that's where a lot of the fun of Magic and Mayhem comes from, and that's where the name came from. Your spell can get mayhemified. Um, and then you basically just follow the instructions on the actual card itself. So in this one here, you'll say, if you're going to need a bigger staff, it says, if spell is cast at opponent, then it causes double effect to all opponents. Caster is frozen for one turn while wizard changes into clean underpants. You know, so it's uh, basically, it makes the spell a heck of a lot more powerful. If you're, if you're playing against three other players and you can, and you get this, and this mayhem card pops up when you're attacking one of those players, it will actually end up affecting all of them, you know, for the same amount of damage. And we also have a little, little uh, description at the bottom there that kind of describes, you know, what's kind of going on. And we, we hope those are funny and entertaining for you. We try to make them as humorous as possible. All right. So now we go back to some of the others that we saw here, like the shield cards. Um, so... 
In the game, you can also protect yourself with shields. Um, we call them protective shield barriers. And um, the elements you use for those are the shield element. That kind of makes sense, right? Um, and each barrier requires a minimum of two shield cards. So if you combine two shield elements together, I, I'm sorry, I said two shield cards, I meant to say two shield elements. If you combine two shield elements, you can have a barrier that has a protective strength of one. If you decide to add a third shield element when you cast the actual barrier, you'll increase it by its barrier strength by another one. So let's say you have three of these cards. You know, three shield cards, which one's worth um, one shield element. That gives you three shield elements. That casts the first barrier that has a protective barrier strength of two. And then that third one gives it a protective barrier strength of three. So you now can protect yourself from three uh, points of damage. One thing to keep in mind with this is that let's say you have that three barrier strength shield um, and you get attacked with a spell that does four damage. It will bring your barrier down you will be protected from three of those points of damage, but there'll still be one point of damage that gets past you, and then it hits you, and you'll take one point of damage. One's a lot better than four, but it won't it won't block everything. It just absorbs a little bit of that. So it's right here. A barrier with a two strength will absorb two points of damage before collapsing. The rest of it goes past. Any spell damage that exceeds the strength of the shield barrier is passed by the target. That's what I was just trying to explain. And I think that means you could read that there um, in your cards if, that, if you'd like to understand that a little bit more. A couple other things about shields um, that are, are unique. Um, a shield can actually be used to protect any wizard or any summoned creature in the game. It doesn't have to be just for you or the person who casts it. You can actually cast it on somebody else. You can cast it on an ally wizard or you can cast it on a summoned creature in the game. It's actually a great strategy to use it on a summoned creature. It really just gives that, that extra impact, uh, especially if you have a particularly powerful creature um, that can do some serious damage. It's nice to kind of keep it around a longer if you can. Um, especially if this is a different way to go. Um, the target uh, protected with a shield barrier cannot be healed, frozen, zapped, dried, or made wet. And, you get, and that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Um, the wizard is inside of the shield barrier. If that shield is blocking um, a spell from hitting the wizard, well, that's going to be any spell. That's going to be a healing spell. That's going to be a, a frozen effect. That's going to be a zapping that can kind of occur when the, when the wizard gets wet and it gets hit with lightning. Um, it can, the same thing with the drying effect, a wetting effect, when they get kind of uh, sprayed with water to wet them. Um, so none of that stuff can happen because the, the shield barrier is protecting you from that. Um, and also, barriers can be repaired. So um, if each shield element will repair... Um, one damage uh, point up to the initial casting. So if you did that uh, original barrier and you used two shield elements and that made a two barrier, you know, a, a barrier with a protection of two, um, then it, let's say it gets damaged for one. You could heal it back up to two, but you can't heal it beyond that. But if you created a, an initial barrier that had a, protective, a protection level of four, then that would actually be, you can actually, he, um, you shouldn't say heal that, really I'd probably call it repair it, repair it back up to four, but not beyond that. So that's a, that's a real powerful uh, tool in your toolbox. All right, so we talked about um, how the dealing up the game setup, talked about how to win, got the, the, the anatomy. So we'll actually go over now um, the spell cards themselves. So this is important um, too, in terms of how you combine the elements to make the spells. So in, you can see here in the, uh, in the spell, each spell is a recipe and it requires elements in order to cast them. We call those the ingredients. And in this one here, the fire bolt, it's actually two fire and one lightning. If you can get two fire and one lightning, you can cast this spell. And one quick kind of reference is that this would cause two damage, generally speaking. But if you read this little box here, this is like the additional spell effects. It'll tell you some other stuff too that can really add to the strategy of the game. Like for instance, this one can cause four damage if it's cast in the same turn as another spell with two or more fire elements. So it kind of has this ramping up effect. So if you, if you think about it, oh, I could cast this spell right now, but maybe next round I might get another one other card that might allow me to cast a second spell that also has fire in it, then boom, I can actually increase my damage by two. So it's, um, so it's something to kind of keep in mind. It's also, it can also um, do other types of effects for wet and frozen targets. So, you know, uh, read those uh, additional effects closely because that's a lot of times where the nuance of the strategy is going to come in. And, um, and one thing is, uh, that you really want to keep track of, too, is we have these double element cards, right? Like you saw the Intense Arcane. It's worth two Arcane. Well, if you look, let's go with, the, let's do a different example. Let's say um, there's, one, there's one double element called, uh, card called the Limitless Lightning uh, element card. And it's worth two Lightning. Now, if I used Raging Fire, which is worth two Fire, um, that fulfills my two Fire requirement here. But if I could also use my Limitless Lightning card to fulfill this one Lightning, but now I just wasted a Lightning. I can't use it in another, in another spell. It just gets discarded as soon as this Firebolt is cast. So um, be mindful of that. You want to try to preserve that as much as possible because every time you throw one of those away, it's when you're not going to get back. And if you use them wisely, you'll find that um, uh, that, that actually can be the, the, the difference between success and failure in uh, Magic of Mayhem.
All right, the next thing we're going to is the summoning elemental creatures. Um, so this is the kind of the card anatomy for that. Uh, summoning elemental creatures is very similar to casting a spell. You have all the elements here. They're a little bit harder to cast. They tend to have more, um, they tend to have more uh, elements required to, to have them because they're very powerful. You want to have them on your side. The nice thing about these is they're not just a one-time thing. You cast it against an opponent and then something happens to your opponent. You actually cast this and it, and it creates this creature that can stand beside you and fight along with you and have some pretty cool effects along the way. So the, um, and what you'll see here is uh, you can cast it like you normally would anything else. And this is where um, the, one of the rare times you'll see where some of the rules are violated in Magic and Mayhem. Normally you wouldn't see opposing elements used in the same spell. But look here, I have Arcane and I have Life. Arcane and Life are opposing elements. They should not appear in the same spell, but they do appear uh, together in when you're summoning an elemental. It's kind of like breaking the, the rules of nature. So we figure we can break the rules of Magic and Mayhem too by doing that. Um, so you'll see that they, they kind of combine up. That also makes Arcane and Life a little bit more um, scarce in the game. It's a little harder to, to kind of um, cast them. A lot of them require a shield as well, and that makes it a little harder to cast also. But if you look here too, this number five at the bottom there, that's a little heart. That um, heart indicates that when you cast this um, this spell and you summon this creature, it'll have a health of five. And if you, um, when it also have these little cross swords here, indicate that it has an attack of two. But it has a lot more special effects in addition to that, um, which you can kind of read here. For instance, it'll actually have one plus health. Frigid Elemental gains plus one health for each additional life used in the casting. The initial casting of this spell, if you throw in an extra life, so instead of just this one life here, you throw in a second life, what will end up happening is this will now end up having two more health. So instead of five health, it has seven health. That's very powerful. And you also find too, it says here, it's weak to fire and it's weak to lightning. What does it mean when it's weak to something? It means that it will actually take double damage from a spell that contains that. Um, so, and then you also have immune to cold, which kind of makes sense. You try to cast cold onto a frigid elemental, it's probably not going to hurt it too bad. So it's immune to any spell that contains um, that contains the cold. Um, and this, this particular one will freeze um, all opponents for one turn uh, when it's destroyed. So it'll, um, it, so it'll basically kind of stop everybody in its tracks um, once, once it's destroyed. That's a pretty powerful effect too. It kind of gives you an extra round to... to play the game that nobody else gets so that's a that's a very powerful effect when, it's, when it uh, disappears so again you have a, they have a starting attack health and attack they can be increased in some cases um, when they're immune they can't be damaged at all and when it's weak it actually has to contain two or more of the elements that it's weak to so in this one it says it's weak to fire well when it, if it's uh, if it's attacked by a spell that has two fire or more it will be weak to that if in this case it's also weak to lightning if it's attacked with a spell that has two lightning or more it'll be weak to that it'll take double damage from that spell it's a two two damage spell it'll, it'll actually get four damage spell instead and um, what interesting about some creatures that i mentioned before is that they will expire when the summoning wizard perishes so if you cast this spell and you summon this creature and you die in the battlefield your creature continues you can still continue to control them and they can go on and win the game for you so it's uh, so keep that in mind sometimes you're getting real close to the end and you might have a spell that might put you over the edge or you have one that can kind of keep you in the game a little bit longer you might want to go with the uh, summon elemental pretty fun stuff all right and I think we've got, I think we covered everything um, in the uh, in kind of the basics of the um, uh, of the game. There are some more uh, complex rules that we'll go into as well, um, but the this kind of gives you a real basic like get you get uh, hit the ground running um, understanding of how Magic of Mayhem uh, the card game is played. So hope you enjoy.